Hey everyone, welcome to the program. I'm Rebecca McLaughlin Easton, and in this week's show, we have fashion, we have books, and a Grammy winning musician. We're on the ground in Egypt, where young designers are measuring up the potential business opportunities in the plus size fashion space. We also head to Dubai for a private audience with DJ Jazzy Jeff, who shot to fame for his musical collaborations with the actor and rapper Will Smith. Hey, this is DJ Jazzy Jeff. When you're watching Inspire, it's always summer, summer, summer time. Time to sit back in the wine. But first, Salim Saeed examines the digital transformation taking place within the region's publishing sector and reads between the lines of why so many young authors are struggling to be published. Books, books, and more books were unsurprisingly the focus of the Abu Dhabi Publishing Forum, which saw young writers and distributors from 27 countries attend. Being assessed this year in workshops and panel discussions were trends in book launches and alternative ways to access more readers. This is the second edition of the Forum, where industry leaders have gathered to highlight the critical role of technology in advancing the region's publishing industry. The average Arab citizen reads approximately 16 books, or for about 35 hours per year, according to the Arab Reading Index. And with more youth swiping screens rather than turning pages, innovations like Amazon's Kindle eBooks in Arabic hit the MENA market last year. So too did Storytel Arabia, an audiobook platform containing 1,000 books. Launched in 2012, Ebjed is one of the earliest Arabic language platforms for digital books. It's a social network for reading, where paid subscribers can access 3,000 uploaded ebooks and share their reactions. The founder says that the application's interactive format has been the key to its success. That created like a snowball effect, like everyone wants to have an account and also start talking about the books and tell their Facebook friends about it. So this social part really, really increased the readership and the appetite to read certain books. Digital publishing continues to gain momentum in the MENA region and e-publishing remains relatively new. There will always be authors and readers who prefer physical books. The tradition and the new forms of publishing can happily sit side by side, according to the Abu Dhabi Department of Culture and Tourism, which says that increasing readership in any way possible is the most important goal. And the biggest opportunity today is, is how do you adopt modern technologies and primarily the e-book and the audio book to drive uh, uh, this distribution up, to drive readership up. Ibrahim Nasrallah and Dima Wanous are Arab authors who were recognized for their works in Arabic fiction in 2018. And it's hoped they will provide inspiration to young aspiring writers who want to see their works in digital and printed form one day. It was DJ Jazzy Jeff's disc spinning skills which made him popular in the 1980s. That, and of course, his appearance on the popular TV show The Fresh Prince of Bel Air with Hollywood actor Will Smith. Today, he's still DJing, and ahead of a gig in Dubai, he stepped away from his turntables to speak to Inspire. In the mid 1980s, DJ Jazzy Jeff shot to acting and music fame as one half of a comedy duo with Will Smith in the popular television series The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. The pair's greatest success was with their single Summertime, which earned them their second Grammy, and the two have remained the best of friends ever since, appearing on stage together again in 2017 with the tour of the UK and Croatia. With more than 60 discs to his name and after a 10-year hiatus, Jeff last year released M3, his first album as an independent artist. And as well as producing his own content, he's dedicated to fostering new talent by hosting regular gatherings in the US called The Playlist, where he brings together both established and new performers to share ideas and make music. It's a forum, he says, that he's keen to integrate Arab artists into one day. Jeff visits the Middle East regularly, master scratching tunes for UAE audiences and live shows he replicates in Asia, Australia and North America. Inspire caught up with the Globetrotter in the UAE to hear more. Jeff, a very warm welcome to Inspire Middle East. Thank you, thank you. You're a regular visitor to these shores. What is it that you like about the UAE? What keeps drawing you back? 
I love the fact that it's a very big melting pot. Um, it's a big melting pot uh, with the locals. But every once in a while, I try to pick up some of the local music. Um, I don't get a chance to do it as much as I want because I'm so focused on what I have to play. And sometimes you just want to sprinkle some of the local flavor in. You're working on a new album, true or false? I am always working on music. I have a studio set up in, in my hotel room and I'm working on music as we speak. And might any famous collaborations be involved? Will and I, we've been talking. We've, we, we've been talking. Where the conflict comes in is I travel 160 dates out of the year and he's probably arguably the biggest movie star on the planet. Now, of course, you're known and loved for Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and yes. your collaborations with Will Smith. Was Will a good acting coach for you? He was a great acting coach without coaching. The beginning part of the Fresh Prince, he was getting his feet wet. I absolutely had no idea what I was doing. They just gave me a line. I read it, people laughed, and I was like, don't mess with it. I don't understand why. How easy is it for you as friends to critique each other's work? How honest can you be? Um, we can be very, very honest. I remember having a conversation with him um, after the movie After Earth came out. He said, what did you think about the movie? And I said, I loved it. I said, but my son didn't. And I said, you have been a master at making movies that my mom love, I love, and so does my kids. I said, maybe it's time for you to make movies that I love now. Now, you build a community of creative musical minds. It's called The Playlist, and you host them at your house. And it's a, a jamming session on a grand scale. Is it fair to call it that? We try to get people to just communicate on a musical level. Like, it's a really big musical camp. And we have a lot of guest speakers that kind of really cater to people and rebuilding um, a lot that's taken away in the music industry. I feel like there are a lot of artists that are heartbroken um, because, you know, unfortunately the music industry is somewhat of realizing that Santa Claus isn't real. Um, and there are a lot of artists that don't recover from that. You say that people that you know are heartbroken, that music producers in the industry have had their eyes opened and they're not happy with the state of play. What's gone wrong? It's always been set up wrong. Um, there's the music side and then there's the business side. The business side has never been fair for the music artists, you know, for the, for the composer, for the artist. They are the ones that get paid the least. There are addiction problems and there's depression and things that are going on, but you're on stage in front of 30,000 people and 15 minutes later you're in a hotel room by yourself. It is a difficult life, I imagine, to, to reconcile the two sides of it, but do you think the rising artists of today could be accused of chasing fame and money rather than their creative musical talent and a growing fan base? Absolutely. But I think a lot of that comes from the business. The business is the side that tells you to chase the fame and the money and not the music. You know, sometimes they have a song or an idea that they feel very passionate about and they're told not to do it because that won't sell. Jeff, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Thank you. We turn our attention now to fashion in Egypt, where in a population of around 100 million people, plus-size shoppers are an underserved segment of the markets. Emma and McKay went on the trail of young designers who were catering for curves in the capital of Cairo. There's no lack of fashion in Cairo, but outfits for full-figured women haven't featured much in the shops until now, with some designers creating plus-size ranges. That's really something that's missing, we found lacking in the market, because it's kind of a, a cliche that a big woman should just wear whatever fits her. But that's not tried. We try to make things that are appealing, that are fashionable, that will make her look pretty, things that are uh, trendy. According to the World Health Organization, Egypt has one of the highest rates of obesity globally. And with a population of around 100 million people, designers are presented with a significant customer base. In fashionable Shihab Street, 
Young entrepreneurs are testing their brands on shoppers. The designers model their own creations using social media to push body shape diversity and break style stereotypes. The challenge they face is a mainstream media industry that mainly portrays slender women. But there are some exceptions, and last year, an Egyptian women's magazine, What Women Want, put three full-figured women on its cover. It's a good market and a very difficult market. Not every uh, model or every product is suitable for a large size. The designers are determined to promote body confidence in Egyptians, young and old, by putting curvaceous ladies at the center of their region's fashion scene. Whatever we do, we try to focus on the details that will make a woman's body look better, will make her feel more confident in herself without really changing what she is. That's a wrap of our show. We hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget, you can catch all of our episodes online at Euronews.com. Before I say goodbye, here are some social media posts that caught the attention of the team this week. Kenyan DJ Babu loves playing sets for what he calls the region's cosmopolitan crowds. Nihara from India, author of the book Lost Words, is impressed by the diversity of her UAE readers. And Aline from Lebanon posted this pic of herself from a day out with her mother, saying they're both delighted that plus-size fashion is taking off in the Middle East.